Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Banyan Technologies Tire Tracks podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Escolas. And with me today, we have both Lost Freight and the co-founder of Truck, Truck, yeah, Truck Parking Club, Evan Shelley, which is something I wasn't aware of before, looking forward to it. Whereas the Lost Freight, we got Reed loosed a lot. Did I just butcher that, by the way, Reed? How do you pronounce Actually, it? Actually, w- it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. So I'm uh, no, loose to low, lost a lot, whatever works. I don't, I don't care. There's a, a louds a lot. I'm sure you've heard a lot of them over the years there. My my last name has been butchered a lot too, but I feel like yours has a little more variation for fun in it. Yeah, there's there's some there's some fun ones in there, but it's all it's all good. So thank you guys very much for joining me today. I know normally I talk to um, different industries within the LTL and parcel world, but I know a lot of times you guys are more focused on, at least in the lost freight, on the brokerage, on that truckload side, especially when I'm reading it. But um, tell me a little bit, Reed, uh, who you are for the, the few people that haven't seen your name pop up around and why you have gotten into kind of this logistics, media, communication, and platform. Because like I said, most people I talk to are kind of, uh, I don't want to say buttoned up, but are they're a little, I, I hate to say a little more professional, but you seem to bring a little more of the fun, casual attitude towards it. It doesn't mean you're unprofessional, but it's a different vibe. So where, where does it all come from? Well, it might mean I'm unprofessional. We don't, I don't know. We'll let other people make that judgment. But uh um, yeah, no, I mean, I was, uh, I was a freight broker out of college, uh, just doing truckload brokerage. So I did that for I, like cumulatively, like s- about six or seven years. So that's kind of my, uh, and I got into the industry cause I needed a job. I mean, that's really just it. Uh, isn't that the, isn't that the great reason some people have passions that I'm like, yeah. I have bills. I would like to not have, I would like yeah, to pay, yeah. please. I, I graduated from college, uh, with a philosophy degree and, uh, and when I was done, I was moving. I was in Wisconsin, and um, my wife, my now wife, had moved to Boston, and she was like, "Hey, come out to Boston." I was like, "Okay," and I needed a job. And so my buddy worked at Echo. That's where I started. Uh, and he was like, "Hey, you should apply." And I was like, "Okay." So that's it. <laughs> did you get, did you get any bad jokes? But you should philosophize on you know like getting someone to pay you money, like because I just remember I loved the idea of philosophy in college, but then I was like. All right. How do I get someone to pay me to do this? I don't. I don't know how I work that one out. Yeah. Well, I've I I, I figured it out so far. It started <laughs> with moving freight, and and now I'm just uh, posting memes and stuff. So uh, it's so far so good. But yeah, it's definitely not. Uh, you got to choose your own adventure when you do that. It's not very well defined for you. But that's. Uh, I guess that's a a, a a a bit philosophical too. So maybe that's. I don't know. I mean, it's, I have my opinions and all that, but you said we weren't going to talk about anything too controversial. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave that for another podcast. I've been a liar before, but, uh, we'll get to Evan here. Who's joining us, uh, mobily from the van here, Evan, thanks for joining us. So with, with the truck parking club, uh, this is newer to me as we were talking here, tell me about yourself and a, a little bit about the truck parking club. Yeah. So myself, um, former real estate guy, um, went to school for civil engineering and ended up going into construction and then development and then to real estate, um, soon after I graduated and started flipping houses, uh, out of my own and, and fortunate to not go broke doing that and, and kind of grew that business into, um, flipping large commercial land deals. And through doing some of those deals, I found out about the issue with truck parking. Um, I was I was working on an industrial land deal and everyone was telling me this is a great area for truck parking. And mm. and the municipality said, we aren't going to support truck parking at this location, even though it's zoned industrial. Really? And so that's when a light bulb went off. Yeah. Yeah. That's when a light bulb went off in 2021. And I was like, something's not right here. If there's not enough truck parking, but these, you know, local governments are are giving a lot of pushback on anyone who wants to develop it, then what gives, you know, what's going to happen. And, and from there over the next six to 12 months started just talking with a lot of stakeholders in logistics and trying to figure out what's going on. And long story short, ended up starting truck parking club in 2022. And, um, 
really created it as an Airbnb type model where we take existing space and turn it into truck parking. So okay. really our, our, you know, um, 30 second pitch on truck parking club is that uh, truck parking club helps truckers uh, find truck parking all across the U S uh, on our website and mobile app. And we help property owners and businesses uh, monetize their extra space, whether that's a trucking company, tow truck company, truck repair shop, CDL school, warehouse, uh, truck parking operator. And yeah. so we really created this two-sided marketplace where we connect the two. And, and now we're at, you know, 385 locations across the U.S., um, tens of thousands of bookings, tens of thousands of uh, drivers coming to our marketplace looking for parking on a weekly basis um, and just continuing to, to scale as quickly as possible. Now, a, I have a question, and this is more from, so I'm, I'm much more on the software side. I, as far as freight and dealing with it, uh, other than with Banyan, I did some seasonal work for UPS, but that's about it. So when I'm driving by on the highway and I see all the trucks stopped and fill up the rest stop, is that indicative of the fact that there isn't other good options and that's where the truck parking club kind of comes in? Or are there, there differences between just a quick stop and when maybe I need to really you know get some shut eye and reset? What's, so it's a little bit of both. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. So uh, overnight parking, there is a very, very big need. Um, and we work to help with that need because, you know, currently if you can't find any parking, it is parking on the on-ramp or off-ramp and risking, you know, public safety, right. A, and then B, risking a, risking a ticket. Um, and oh, is that, are those, for us, is that ticketable sometimes just being parked off there? So it's really not a, a kind of a beneficial situation in most cases. Yeah, it's really not. And in a lot of scenarios, um, you know, whether it's a state trooper or DOT will pull up and say, you, you got to keep moving. You know, you can't park here. And, and unfortunately, that driver may have a few minutes left on his clock or whatever. And they're like, figure it out. And it's it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic. And then they have to use personal conveyance and it becomes a whole thing. So, um, you know, that was a big part of the reason that Truck Parking Club was created. And as we've continued to grow the company, we really get a combination of hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly bookings. Okay. Um, so we really just a pure marketplace that helps drivers, carriers, mega carriers um, find parking, whether it's for an hour or, or for if it's for a month. So do you now you talk about that and that being since 2022, have you and Reed known each other through Lost Freight, or do you guys have a relationship going back further than that? What's what's the connection there? Yeah, so Reed and I, if I'm not mistaken, Reed, uh, we, we randomly met in Cleveland at a Cleveland? freight conference, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah last, I think last, that, last summer. Yeah, I think we were just like hanging out. Like, I, I think you were, I just walked up to you and like said, what's up or whatever. And then, yeah. um, I don't know, we just kind of stayed in touch ever since. That's a that's a movie uh, right there. Just just filled with plot. You've got tropical Cleveland in the background. I, I like that. I like everything about exactly. that. No. Um, but so as far as that, and we'll get back to that. I, I want to hit on Reed. You came out with one of my favorite pieces of, I'll call it software fun. Freightgong.com. Um, <laughs> I, I love the announcement. Um, I use it regularly as I just for my wins. And when I need a gong, because um, I had a gong in the office. It was small and it was hidden by the other coworkers I have. And then eventually it was not brought as we moved offices. And I, though I felt hurt by that, I love the freight gong and it makes me very happy. And I have to, A, thank you for that. And B, where, why, why was that something you put together? And I know this is, this is, we're going to get on tangents here because I finally get a, an yeah. opportunity to talk about some of these things that I love. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, um, I guess it would have been like late October, um, when I made that, but I do, so I have this discord, right? Like a discord server group yeah. with a bunch of, with a bunch of people in it, freight people. And then on Tuesday nights, we do like a tech meetup and companies will do demos and people will show products that they're building. And it's just like, uh, you know, kind of a, kind of a free for all tech related though. And people, there were, there were no more demos during the during during the that one tuesday and 
And I had like, I don't even know how I got the idea. Obviously everyone on LinkedIn posts gongs, like schemes, always posting gongs. Like people are posting gongs all the time. And I was like, well, you know, am I allowed to curse on this podcast? Yeah. Uh, uh, All right. Great. Yeah. So I was, uh, I'll try not to, but anyway, I, I I, I, I don't like cursing that much. So anyway, um, I, so it was always in my mind, like I'd started putting gongs into like memes I was making and I was, I was, so I was just thinking about gongs and I was like, I like to, I, I know enough code to be dangerous. And so I was, uh, you know, just sp- spun up like, oh, what if I just put this gong on the site and just like make it ring when you click it and that should be easy enough. And I did it. And then I demoed it during the, during the, t- the discord meetup and I, like that night, like I made it in like 30 minutes and then I, d- I was like, Hey, there's no more demos. You guys want to check out this thing at this gong I just made. And, and so I did. And then I was like, well, I'm going to, ma- I'm going to put it online. And does anyone want to sponsor it? And I sold like four sponsor slots in like the first, like during the, during the demo, like right as, right after I demoed. So that's what they call in the, in the startup world product market fit. I was going to uh, say, get it on the ground floor. So I've got a few comments on that. You're on unveiling where, what was the event you unveiled it at? Because I can't remember. Oh, at F3. Yeah, at F3, F3, the clip of it is probably the only clip of a conference I've ever watched more than once. And I wasn't required to, to get product knowledge and you buying and being like, all right, here's the first three minutes of me talking. And you're like, and I need more time because literally that's it. That's all I've got. And then you unveiled it and hit the gong. And I have never been, as a person who has to present regularly, has to talk about software and use all of the, the keywords and the synergies. It made me very happy to see just, all right, here you go. Here's, here, well, here's the gong. That, that's probably why uh, That's probably why Freightway has asked me if I wanted to demo it. Um, but I won't. I won't. I won't say too much about that. But I did. Unfortunately, I was not considered for for best of show. Nobody could vote. Nobody was allowed to vote. No, snubbed. Me. snubbed. Um, so because I think I would have very clearly won that won that uh, contest. But I think attendee at, attendee favorite for sure. Okay. Yeah. So while we're on it, there and you might not know, there is a picture what looks hand drawn of a centaur on it that goes through as the vendors. Yeah. Please yeah. tell me where and what that is, because the more I look at it, the more questions I have and nothing, it's never answered. I just have more storylines in my head. I don't know. I can't remember what that that one links to, but that was a buddy of mine. Um, he's uh, he's an old Echo colleague of mine, Carlos Fernandez. He's the I think he's like sector VP of carrier sales at Echo. And he hit me up one night. was like, "Hey, can you put this picture on the gong for me?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. I don't care." And his, the drawing, his of him title, a, his title makes that so much better. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you knew Carlos, he's crazy. So, but he's a really good dude. <laughs> and it's a, uh, but he's it's a drawing of him as a centaur. Yeah, yeah. It's like I think it's like in the office, like on the whiteboard, like. And he just took a picture of it and sent it to me. So, yeah. And then we'll do the last one on freight gong here. So. I, I was as soon as you announced it, I went to my marketing team who does the podcast and like, we need to have a spot on there. And so from a personal request, all I can ask is, will you take money other than a personal Venmo? Because they need to send it to an ACH oh, oh, house or something. Yeah, yeah, we're, the were the ones. Yeah, you were the ones who tried to sponsor it, but aren't able to Venmo. Like, I don't have any official way to collect the cash. Like, I literally have just had people Venmo me. So uh he has I guess to pay guys, for a load moved that doesn't go anywhere will that <laughs> i don't know we'll, we'll work something out after this we could take this one offline uh, that's uh, great because maybe yeah. i can get myself drawn as another mythical creature and we can put that up yeah, too whatever whatever you want yeah just let me know no so not to leave evan out here with uh the the parking club hey truck truck parking club is a freight gong sponsor too there right? it is so, right the, there the, so the, go on hit the, the go there. segue I like that. I love that. And then with that, and here's the next segue, you guys told me you've got uh, an exciting announcement for this podcast. It'll be, you know, first, first out there, who knows when this will air, probably, (laughs) (laughs) probably many weeks after you actually announce it, but you're hearing it here first, at least live when this was recorded. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I'm uh, so like Evan and I, uh, like you said, he said we met in June and, um, I, I think he initially, I think basically in July, he called me up. He's like, Hey, you want to come, you want to come work with us? And I, at that point I was like, uh, no, uh, I don't remember <laughs> what I said exactly, but I, I told, I said no. And then fast forward to today, I'm, uh, I'm officially joined truck parking club as a CMO. 
Hey. Um, just, uh, just so, so that's, that is, that is some serious alpha that you're getting here. Patrick is the first, first person uh in the in the big bad freight world to know that so and i and i love that so as evan as reed as your cmo what what do you expect to get from the the creator and designer of freight gong that that the parking club can really monetize and blow up bigger than you'd ever viewed possible before Oh, it was it was always just a play on lifetime membership on freightgong.com it was just a lifetime play <laughs> that's all it is yeah, it's yeah. like solidify, solidify the sponsorship. Um, no, no. So, you know, to give like uh, a little bit of background, um, Reed and I have always bounced things off of each other, have been talking about marketing and talking about truck parking club and marketing for, mm-hmm. a, for a long time, like ever probably since the first time we ever met each other. And yeah. uh, it's very clear that we work well together professionally and also just personally we we get along well and and i think as as i think everyone would admit he has a very keen sense on on logistics and logistics marketing and what what gets people interested and Mm -hmm. i think as as reed puts it what's stirring the pot he's very good at stirring the pot on social but also on top of that i think the things that he like people people don't know about him is he's, he's extremely good at um uh, graphics and and marketing in general and um branding obviously please advise is a good example of that, <laughs> Love that. um and it, and it and like i think people look at reed and say it's 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 luck but it's also it's actually he just has a, he's just really good at understanding this stuff and he makes it look like he just like wrote it on a piece of paper and slapped it on a hat which he did but <laughs> that's you know but a lot of people he, slap he, things he, on hats all the time it doesn't mean you get anywhere with it yeah yeah and, and, and so ultimately um i think he aligns extremely well with what truck parking club stands for and um through a lot of conversations between he and i we we thought it was a good fit and um I expect Reed to be himself. That's all I expect. So it's it's yeah. not a it's not a long it's a, not a long laundry list of things. It's just you know yeah. Reed being Reed, and and let's just keep getting it. You know. Yeah. Well, I I Patrick, I will say this. I um I wouldn't. I've I've not to say that I've been offered a million CMO jobs. That's not what I want to say because that would be false. But I have been. <laughs> Like people have talked to me in the past about coming to work for them. Sure. And I've never seriously considered anybody really at all. And, and at first I didn't even seriously consider going to work with Evan when he's, well, when he first you did, you did say no to begin with. So yeah. 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 And, 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 but I, but I just, over time, I, and I've, I've hung out with these guys a lot more than just Evan. Like I've hung out with this whole team, like at various shows. And I've also obviously seen kind of what they're up to. Mm-hmm. And I'm incredibly like I think they have the perfect team to do exactly what they're trying to do, and I think it's a very it's a pro- it's a problem that is not well. Like it's a simple solution to a huge problem that makes a ton of sense to me intuitively. It takes twenty seconds to understand what they're doing. Yeah, and and basically everyone else who's like, hey, you want to come work with us? It's like. What you, the would, heck you, you, you would need a you would need a week or a semester yeah, of and, and being taught what it is they do. Exactly. And I think in the industry, especially on the technology side of things in this industry, it's very just like I I, I don't really want to go work for the hundredth TMS provider. You know what right. I mean? Like I, I don't I I don't have any interest. I I have an interest in doing something new and novel, a model that's been tested in other industries, right? The marketplace yeah. model. Like I I'm it's and it's a great brand. Get in, get in at the ground floor with a team that's already crushing it. They have tons, tons of traction. Like this is, this is like the best possible thing, I think. And I think over the next couple of years, we're going to take where we're at now and build on what's been done and just continue to crush it. Like I think I, I'm very, very, very bullish on, on, on the business uh, and, 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 and the team. And I think it's worth being bullish on because uh, kind of as Evan was describing, it feels like a, a win-win with both, hey, I've got the area and the land that I could use some more money yeah. just by having and sure, pull on up to it. One of the the questions that comes up to me, and it kind of goes back to when you were saying when you were in real estate and municipalities were against it, what are some of the obstacles that the part, you know, that the truck parking club is coming up against, whether it's 
uh, specific to what you're finding in each day, or it's more of a kind of holistic towards the idea of trucks parking places. Like what, what are you, what are the big in your way pieces that are stopping you from you and Reed from hitting the ground running right now and shouting at the mountaintops and becoming the next, the Airbnb of trucks. Yeah. I would just say just education and awareness. Um, you know, a good percentage of, we call them property members, which are property owners that we talk to are like, Oh wow, this is awesome. Like sign me up now. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, that it's that way now since we have so much traction you know if when it was our third property it was a little harder sell but now it's a little bit easier um having 385 or so of them uh and having a lot of case studies and things but just education about what we do and, and just continuing to expand that awareness i mean you know we're our goal was is five to ten thousand properties in the next three years and, mm-hmm. and i i think we're we're very much putting all the pieces in place for that to happen. We had two to three new locations every single day at this point. And that, that'll, that'll soon be 10 a day. Um, And uh, it's really just education, awareness, scaling properly, building the tech properly, and probably most importantly, continuing to give our customers the trucker which we call trucker members, the best experience possible every single time. Like, yeah. and, 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 and that's as long as we continue doing that and we continue scaling out the number of new locations rapidly and give the property members a good experience. I mean, that, that's just all I I'm consumed with and just continuing to execute on that and do it as quickly as possible. Um, so I, I don't know if I really directly answered your question. I mean, the, you know, pushback would just be someone saying, I don't want trucks parking on my property or something like that, which okay. happens. Um, you know, does that, it, does it that happen happens. a lot? Like, were you now? Are you, and here's another question Are you scoping out areas based on popular lanes and going, this would be a good spot? Or is it people are becoming aware? Or how do you, how are you lead generating within the, um, the actual spaces? Yeah. So that's, that's a good question. Um, so we can go to certain areas. Uh, for example, Baltimore with the bridge collapse, we had um, some of the federal, um, you know, uh, like FMCSA. Uh, this is this was written in landline, so I guess I can talk about it. The um, FMCSA reached out and was like, you know, talking about, hey, we have this serious issue, and we're like, oh, we'll we'll go find some parking. Sure. So within a few days, we found. Uh, like 20 spaces in Baltimore at two different locations just to help alleviate the issue up there. Okay. Um, so that's, that's a situation of, we just went and found it yeah. in a very constrained area. And then, um, you know, a ton of it's inbound because we built the brand out, you know, read um, continuing to build the brand out uh, across social and all the other different platforms that we're marketing on. Um, so we get a ton of inbound. I mean, it, that's, that's and, awesome. And, as anyone who's done ever cold calling in their life, that's the greatest that you can ever hear. Um, and as a person who's done it in multiple lives, yeah, the inbound. Yeah. It, it's hard to believe sometimes. Like, yeah, I'd like to give you business. Okay. Well, why? And yeah. who's putting you up to this right now? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I think yeah. well, the one thing, the one thing that's interesting though about this, about the about the property members, especially, and one thing that I've like realized lately is. I mean, a lot of them are like trucking companies, just literally with a yard and extra oh. space in their yard, right? So they're it just makes they're, so they're, much they're sense. Literally, yeah, they're literally already parking trucks there. They just have never parked anybody else's truck there, <laughs> and so so it's like it's it's they know exactly what they're dealing with. It's not like you know some person who's never seen a truck before being like, oh yeah, sure, come park here. Although obviously. Like there, there might be, there could be, there's no rule against that. Per well, that's se, what like, I have. I have imagine a driving range going out of business and being like, Hey man, you guys can just pull right up here and we'll tell people they can't hit golf clubs while you're here. Like, you know, like there's some weird, and I don't want to say weird. So there's probably some unique places that you could probably get to park just on the basis of nobody uses it. I'm not doing anything to this yeah, land. Yeah. Get, get me a way to, to turn some money on here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a very, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting problem with like, and there's just so many, there's so many companies that have extra yard space. They're just, right. they're just, they're just are, and they, and they probably never even considered it like, 
or or if they have considered it as like a potential revenue generating channel to like park trucks, like what are they going to do most of the time, right? Like what are they going to are they, they yeah are, are they, they going to take like out their own ad and, and start yeah, putting yeah. that out there? How are they going to yeah. market it? Like, and there are businesses that have done that. There are people who have done that, but I okay. mean the market the marketplace play is just so. Like it takes obviously, the, obviously not successful enough that I I would know of it or heard it, you know, in a way that is meaningful. Well, they're all they're all eventually gonna come on and become truck parking club property members. There you we're go. We're gonna post we're gonna post so many memes that they won't even be able to like avoid us anymore, right? <laughs> like, uh, so what what are the requ- now what are the requirements for something like that? Is it just have a certain square footage of or just area or you know, does it have to be lit? Like I I'm curious about what kind of uh, conditions for uh, a, a member spot that you would have there? Yeah. So what we say, I mean, the easiest way to say is just any location suitable for truck parking. Okay. And typically that's going to consist of, you know, adequate access, you know, maneuverability in the lot. Yeah. Adequate space to park, adequate space to exit the lot. Um, and after you do so many of these, we, you um, really have it down to a science okay. where, and, and we, you know, there, there are times where we have to say no, but um, like Reed said, a lot of these are tr- trucking companies that are already taking trucks in and out of the lot. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's a case by case basis really. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we have very thorough onboarding process to make sure that uh, the location is adequate because, you know, uh, our biggest risk is, is getting a, truck on a property that they for whatever reason they have an issue right Mm -hmm. and we we essentially that essentially never happens it's extremely rare um that something like that happens and that can have things can happen at any lot so we've essentially got it down to where it's our our standards are so strict that it it's just extremely rare circumstances that that anything ever happens so um but it's you know you just learn that through a lot of reps and just a, a, a lot of educating ourselves in the beginning on, on what we needed to look out for. And, and now at this point, we just, we just have a thorough, thorough checklist. And then with your, with truck parking club, how many employees do you have? How, what's your team like? Yeah, I think we're around 20. Okay. I don't, I don't have the exact number. It may be 19 it may be 21, yeah. maybe 22. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I, I think we're right at 20 though. Are sure. you guys across the nation or you limit, are there some spots that you guys haven't touched yet? What does your coverage area per se look like? We're in a lot of the major cities at this point, 385 locations, um, you know, LA, Dallas, Houston, um, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, um, just outside New York city, New York, you know, up the East coast, so we we've got most of the majors covered. There is still some markets that we want to be even deeper into. Mm-hmm. Um, but at this point, we have a lot of options uh, for for drivers. That's awesome. Now back to Reed. What does this mean for the lost freight side of things? Are you just going to drop everything and be full truck parking club all the time, or is there going to be a, a kind of balancing act for you? Uh, I mean, I would say that I've already been pretty like. I've been doing a lot of things kind of all over the place and it's been basically just me Um, on lost freight. I have a business partner, Jake, and he's got a full-time job. Um, (laughs) So, so he's, so we're all, we're already both like doing a bunch of other stuff. So it's not really like we've got, we've got customers in that business that are just using it. It's very much kind of like set it and forget it Mm -hmm. from like a maintenance standpoint. Like we don't really need to do anything and they're, and they're enjoying it. And that's so, so it's cool. Yeah. So, um, I've already been kind of like spreading my time in a bunch of different things. And I'm kind of more focused now on like, and I also personally was searching for something that I could really sink my teeth into with other people beyond just working with myself. Because listen I've to, been listen to the before. philosopher looking for meaning. Dude, in I, his I life. mean, I've been, it's been two years since I've worked with anybody. I mean, my last job, <laughs> like straight up, like my last job uh, was at Trimble and I got laid off there two years ago in April. <sighs> and I've been like alone basically ever since. And Damn so you, Trimble, so I, how could you do that to read? <laughs> it's, it's honestly, well, on the, on the anniversary of my firing or laying off, whatever you want to call it, 
I did a post and I tagged Trimble. I was like, thanks for firing me. Like, thank you, actually. Like, this was really good. For <laughs> Gen- me. Genuinely, uh, thank you very much. I yeah. would have never had to do any of the things that I'm now enjoying. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Exactly. No, no. So it's it's been it's honestly kind of worked out very, very well um, that, that this that this opportunity fell into my lap because I've been like I've 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 very much wanted to be part of like a team again and a, like a, a good size team and a team that has a that is growing rapidly. And, um, I, yeah, I mean, I think there's very, I don't think there's any other group that I would have rather joined. Right. Like, you know, I didn't have to go anywhere. Like I didn't <laughs> have to do anything, but like, this is, this makes a lot of sense for a variety of reasons. So Evan was going to drive up and put you in the back of that van one way or the other. And then you were either going to work with him, whether, you know, whether you were chose to, <laughs> or you just head popped up in the back of these videos every now and then. It wouldn't, Evan's a, per, Evan's a persistent, a persistent guy. So it wouldn't shock me. So that's why, I, that's why I relented. And, you, and it uh, was better to do it on your terms than when he yeah, eventually yeah. won her over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, um, I still, I mean, I have my discord, like I do that yeah. at night, right? Like that's that there's people in there talking all day. Like I still sell hats. I still, and at Tevin's point, like earlier, he's like, just be you. And he made that very clear from the beginning. He was like, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't have done it if this, that meant I couldn't, you know, do all the shit that I like to do. Uh, I cursed for the first time. Yeah. Uh, I was just saying, Evan, <laughs> Evan, you sound like a smart guy simply realizing that he was probably going to be him regardless, but now you get credit for allowing him to be him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's the magic, right? That's, that's the magic. Right. Like him, him being himself and, and that, I mean, unlocks a ton of creativity in his own life. And like it, it, it only ultimately um, works out well for, for truck parking club, just because he gets to be himself and, and all that good energy spreads over to truck parking club. And, and that's, I I wouldn't have it any other way, but it's also, you know, what's also good though, is like on my own, I like left to my own devices on my own. It's hard to push yourself to learn and do new things, try new things and learn Mm -hmm. new things when you're on your own and you basically get to do whatever you want. You get, you get comfortable or you you pick and you're like, I don't really want to risk too much. It takes a lot of discipline. And I would say that even the most disciplined person in the world on their own is not going to be as like driven to do things as they would be if they were part of an organization with yeah, other need people a little external drive to add and on so, there. So this, this opportunity, this is going to force me to do a bunch of stuff and learn a bunch of things, which it's already happening, right? Which is yeah. already happening. And, and I'm, yeah. So it's, it's a, an opportunity to learn a lot about, you know, uh, different aspects of marketing that I, I, uh, had never really thought too much about and it's kind of allowing me to kind of take a step back and learn things from first principles and apply what I've already been doing, but like, uh, learn new stuff along the way and, and, and do it, you know, for a, for a brand that I think is, uh, that I'm bullish on. So yeah, I mean, this is, it's perfect. And, and I guess that it, it, it's, you've clearly kind of tapped into it. What, what is differing different for marketing within logistics and to the truck side specifically because I feel like it's a it's a completely different game, not just that it's a different industry. I mean, but going out and touching and reaching your audience in meaningful ways feels tougher in the shipping logistics. It's is it just because you know everybody's more pessimistic, the same way that we don't believe a load is actually where it's supposed to be till you know you see it or have a proof of delivery. Why is that? Because we've had I've had other people on the podcast, they've talked about building a narrative and telling a story, but most of the time yours is almost um kind of uh too true and it's funny by itself you barely need to add anything to it without without the picture painted around it why why is that more appealing and why because you've definitely connected with the community in the industry what's the difference well i mean i just think that there's a lot of people out there who uh have i don't know what it is i've been trying to unpack the psychology of this industry uh but there's a lot of people who i think like to try to make what they do and what their companies do seem more sophisticated than it actually is. Like there's almost like an, (laughs) almost like an inferiority complex, like the, (laughs) that the industry has, like where, you know, you look at some marketing materials for like even brokerages and carriers, you look or, or or technology companies. There's three, there's three paragraphs of what they do. And you're like, I will move your stuff 
when and where you want it to. And, and, and I mean, if we're talking about the brokerage side specifically, which is, again, is my history in, from like the operation side of things like that's that's I was a care of sales rep. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I was in like a very, you know, like a salesy type role, operations type role. And I mean, dude, like you're on the ground floor in one of these companies, be, be it a brokerage or be it a carrier or a driver. Your day to day is just like the most stressful thing ever. Like everything's going wrong, yeah. everything's screwed up. Especially if you're a driver, like the the shit rolls down the hill and hits you the hardest, right? And then you look at like what the companies are saying on how they're presenting themselves and how they're talking about themselves, and you read people's like LinkedIn posts, and they're like, you think that they're doing rocket science, but then the reality is like, dude, like we're just moving, we're moving shit from A to B, yeah, and it's hell, and everything's going wrong. <laughs> And these marketing people are like trying to make it look like we're doing rocket science. It's like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And that's why there's a lot of cynicism about, I think about marketing in general in the space is, and it's deserved because it's just so much, there's so much crap out there (laughs) and it doesn't square with the lived experience that all these people like have about the industry. So uh, I think it's just, it's really just about being real yeah. Like, people try to use like the, this, you know, oh, you're you're so authentic. It's like, dude, like that's not even it. Like, just tell it like it is like this is how stuff is like, you know, your truck breaks down. That sucks. Like your day, right. you're like guys giving back loads, people breaking down, shady, crazy stuff happening. Like it is a screwed up industry. Like and there's a lot of crap going on. But like we got to be able to laugh about it or else it'll drive you crazy. Like. And I think that's that's my favorite part is that almost every time you've got something out there, there there's comedy and it's it's generally a comedy of errors or just like you said, the pure and simple situation of of it all. You know, like, OK, at the end of the day, it's it's a real simple ask, but there's so much complexity. And like you said, hell to just drop in the middle of it. And then everybody like, well, why? But but it's just so simple. Why why couldn't you do that? I I don't yeah. have you. There's there's no road anymore. What do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> yeah, man, it's 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 all fun though. So and then um, Evan, it might be too early to ask you on this, but like, what are thoughts other than uh, expanding as far as the different locations with the parking club? Are there uh, you know, if it was a software, would there be a, a bolt on or an upgrade coming? Is there things you want to do with it more than just having some place to to park? Is there a, a deeper, bigger picture of it? Or is right now you're kind of just task at hand with getting as many options for your club members and property members as possible? Yeah, so it, it's definitely the latter. Uh, just continued focus on adding as many locations that are suitable for truck parking as quickly as possible all across the U S while maintaining a great experience for our trucker members. That's, that's, you know, as a CEO, like I, I have to remind myself that and my, (laughs) and my team that like, Hey, let's, let's not lose focus on what the actual goal is here. Like how much of our time are we actually spending on, on this goal? Right. And, and um, so it's just continued focus on that. And as we, you know, execute on that and get several thousand locations, we may start peering out into like other things, but we're not there yet. And, okay. and you know, it's it's more of just let's just keep uh, cranking away day by day, just executing on on the hey, mission. Nothing wrong with just kind of locking into a good thing and focusing on what what you think is important and making sure you do that the best possible, which is in my case, as a Cleveland Browns fan, I just tell my coach to run the ball, but they always like to be too clever. Um, But that being said, and I know you guys are uh, banning itself uh, 20 years on the LTL side, last five years went more over the road, kind of everything. Whereas I think you guys are more on that kind of that truckload by itself, probably some LTL crossover and all of the other modes that have trucks involved. But from a truckload perspective and an industry thought is what do you, what do you guys see in the industry right now? Like is everybody keeps talking about the, the, the pendulum coming back and forth and, you know, we've got new technologies, whether that's in some of the, you know, the driverless trucks coming out, we've got regulation uh, kind of on the, the green side of things. And constantly I'm, I'm, I hear kind of, it almost sounds like the owner operators in the middle 
Um, just from your both your perspectives, Reed's going to have one, and then Evan, I think you you might have a slightly different one. What do you both think about where trucking is and what the situation, where it might be going, uh, just as a whole? Because one of the reasons I do this podcast, not only because I'm loud and I like to hear myself talk, is I like to get information about things that I'm not inherently aware of. So sure, yeah. Um, I mean, if we talk about where like specifically like trucking from like a small carrier and owner operators perspective. And I, and that's who I mostly worked with when I was Mm -hmm. at echo. I mean, a lot of my, like I'm friends to this day with a lot of guys that, that uh, move freight for me. Um, I, I I know that the environment is very challenging for a lot of small fleets right now, especially, I mean, even big fleets, like we see, you know, a lot of the public traded guys are releasing their numbers and they're not doing so well. Um, So, so I think it's just a very challenging market. From, a, from an economic standpoint, um, I think from like a tech standpoint, there's a lot of demands being made of, of, of small fleets right now, be it tracking, be it, uh. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of compliance uh, hoops to jump through these days for good reason, sure. to a degree, because there's lots of fraud and all that nonsense. Um but I mean, it's a very, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, I think it's just a challenging time. So it's easy to kind of stomach all that stuff when you're doing really well and you're making lots of money. But like <laughs> yeah. when you're, you know, when you have Joe Schmo broker calling you up and offering you a dollar a mile on like a lane that you're getting paid $4 a mile on two years ago, you're going to be not super pleased. So it's a very, it's just, it's a tough time for a lot of people. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of it's just kind of is what it is. Uh, I don't I don't have any idea when that'll change. I mean, people smarter than me can try to, <laughs> you know, conjure up or make up when they think that it's going to change. But yeah. I, I don't really have any. I have no idea. Who knows? But it's also a very exciting. I, I do like to see stuff that's being built um, from like a tech standpoint, specifically for carriers and drivers, because especially it, it, when you when you come from the brokerage world and you're looking at the tech that's for broker. I mean, so much tech is made for brokers because they're the ones who tend to write the checks to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right? that and makes fleets, sense. And fleets and small and small carriers especially don't always bring out their checkbook because they've got a bunch of other expenses. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but so so, I, but I'm still very like that's why another reason why I think Truck Parko is awesome because it's like it is a very real need for carriers. And it's, it's not like, it's not something that's like another subscription or like another thing that they have to like, you know, that we're trying to like get, get in between every transaction that they do or anything like that. So I, and I they don't, they don't have to implement it. It's not like a whole, you yeah. know, onboarding it's, process. And it's simple. It's simple. And, and so I, that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm, I, I, I'm bullish on us specifically, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a tough time for carriers and, and. Um, I am sympathetic to them because that's who I worked with. And that's most of my friends are in the, in the freight world are, are carriers. So anyway, yeah, I've said enough. There you Evan, go. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think Reedy hit on some, some of the things I was going to say, I, I think to start it off is, you know, we're in a unique situation where we're just rapidly scaling by just bringing awareness to all the drivers that there's another option mm-hmm. for you, whether you need to park for an hour or, or a few days. Um, and, and so we're continuing to scale rapidly in, in what appears to be a, a, a very weak freight market. Um, so we're, you know, very, feel very fortunate to be able to provide that to drivers you know, and and they see the value in what we're doing, even in a very weak freight market. I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, so like, it's, cl- it's clearly money- a real need, even even if the money is tight. It's something where you guys have been able to grab some traction on, regardless. Yeah, I think it. I think it shows that you know, if if scaling at the rate we're scaling in a in a weak freight market and drivers thanking us that we're giving them more options. I mean, you can just Google us and see what people are saying all across social and reviews and stuff. And, and, um, I, I would say we, we kind of see a bit of the truck parking club specifically. We, we kind of see less of, of that, but then on top of that, we do see some interesting things like where, you know, uh, uh, one thing I saw recently was, um, some guy reached out and said, Hey, can I park all these repo trucks on your lot and sell them? So it's like, yikes. You know what I mean? It, it's like, it's like, it's like, 
used like, used truck parking club used yeah. truck for sale parking club there you go <laughs> yeah because don't yeah. ask me how legitimate these trucks are but they're for sale parking club yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly so just a super you know you see stuff like that and you're like man i just like you feel horrible for these guys like and and another thing on top of that is you know we go to a lot of truck shows so yeah. sitting in alabama now i was in alabama like four days ago um went to chattanooga came back to alabama for alabama trucking association comp annual conference was just in wildwood florida you know six days ago and at a We're truck moving. show yeah and, yeah yeah we 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 like to stay Dude, the truck and- parking club ground game i i'm actually convinced that there's not a company that does more <laughs> shit than 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 this company i swear to god yeah. like, hey. I, I, it's just our culture though it's like it's just outwork outwork everybody that's awesome you know whatever whatever it takes and so but the the close out the point is so we were in wildwood and we went to wildwood last year as well Mm -hmm. and uh wildwood uh 75 chrome shop truck annual truck show last year it was bigger than it was this year and this year it became very clear that the freight market you know it's a tough time out Mm -hmm. there like guys just can't afford to even come to the shows and Uh, they can't afford obviously to bring their trucks to the shows and you know not a you know uh it's just tough and it's it's tough to see um but you know every every market cycle you know it, it goes up and down right but um we are seeing it we're seeing obvious signs of it and we're just doing everything we can to try to work with drivers to make their job um, you know, more, I would say less stressful and more efficient. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really what we focus on. Yeah. And I, and I think that between some of what even lost freight did before you guys mashed up. And I think since COVID has become really apparent, at least maybe more on my side, cause you know, I'm in the industry as well, even on the software. Um, but seeing the truck drivers, you know, through the lens of, of people and people actually driving these trucks and what they have to go through. Whereas for so long, I think maybe, and this is through my personal lens, it was just, those are just trucks on the road. You know, you take for granted somebody, there's a person with needs and a family and trying to make a business behind it. It's, you know, it's just something that you see and constantly back and forth. And that you, we did clearly during like the pandemic took for granted that they would just continue and always be going back and forth from there. So it's awesome that you're able to offer something that's um, a good business fit for you, but also something that, like you said, can make some of those lives easier and make it more, um, more palatable as they have to do maybe some close to the impossible to get in this tight spot to make the business work. Um, here, yeah, no. So coming down to a close here, uh, and I always like to say, and I know that Reed probably has, uh, more of a um, platform than I ever will here, but as you guys are both here, here's an opportunity, um, closing remarks message, you know, how do I find out more on truck parking club? You know, what's, what's next on for Reed? We heard that he's the CMO, like what, anything you guys want to talk about is right here with uh, the last five minutes or so, or even shorter, if you don't feel like talking that long, but both of you can have a, a shot at final shots on the, on the band entire tracks podcast, which is so, you know, synonymous with success in all this is, things. This is the world's, this is the freight market's uh, biggest stage. I think that's what you were that's, saying before. That's, that's actually, that's, that's how that's we're going to put it. Yeah. To come on. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, no, Evan, go, you go first. That and the two cases of Mountain Dew, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would just say, you know, you can find Truck Parking Club, uh, obviously, at truckparkingclub.com. Uh, you can always call in to our 24-7, 365 customer service line, 888-899-PARK. That's 888-899-PARK. That customer service line is only made up of former drivers. Hey. Um we should have said that earlier. <laughs> no, we need to. We need yeah. to lead with. We need to lead with that, man. There we it got, is we, from the CMO. Yeah. There's yeah. the constructive criticism right yeah, that's, there. That's our there takeaway from this. Yeah, because I think that'll <laughs> win us a lot of. That'll win us a lot of favor in the in long on the long term. Anyway, go on. Sorry. No, no, and um, those are the, you know the two things I want to hit. Um, Reed, you want to tell them what we, we got going on with all the socials and, and things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, definitely definitely follow us on, I mean, any platform, really. Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok, Twitter, 
uh, YouTube. Uh, shit, what else? I mean, did I miss any? Facebook? Did I say half, Facebook? Half of them are all just uh, reposting each other's I mean, stuff anyways. So. Well, yeah. Well, well, I mean, there's – dude, there's – I mean, we, we've got a significant – ground game like we like we alluded to earlier yeah. right like hunter who we haven't talked about is is kind of the uh the 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 stunt man if you will for for the uh or the main character of the social channels <laughs> um so i mean i think i think we there's a lot of raw material for us to ch- turn into good content that's going to be both entertaining and spread spread the brand and and make make truck park and club a household household name in the in the freight industry um so so tune in on any of those channels obviously engage right uh we're the, i think they're you know hopefully our socials match the personalities kind of of the company yeah. i think and the people who make it up which i think so far they do um which is great uh and hopefully they're not boring uh and if they're boring <laughs> let it l- let me know uh but i don't think also engage be. yeah 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 so <laughs> um so yeah i mean just just follow us there uh if you're obviously if you're a driver or a, a property we think we got a little more for you to sink your teeth into you can go to the website yeah. uh download the app um beyond that um uh, shit you know follow 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 me and evan evan we need to get evan's uh, social game up a little bit i'm gonna be I helping agree. with that too so you gotta have uh, it like a you gotta have like a find the van you know where's evan like a where's waldo tracker you know it's yeah, well it's wild how many people post photos of the van just on that <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 uh, it's pretty wild i like that yeah. that's awesome yeah man so it's yeah this is this was cool though uh I uh, appreciate you having us on, Patrick. I'm glad. Hey, no. I'm glad we got to do this. I really appreciate it from both of you guys. Like I said, Freight Gong is near and dear to my heart, and hearing about char- Truck Parking Club, and I'm I'm happy and excited to kind of see what you guys can do with it, especially now that you're officially in the CMO role, CMO role, and it's announced there. But uh, guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the time and the information, and. Uh, Anybody else here uh, listening? Thanks again for tuning in to another successful Banyan Tire Tracks podcast. We'll hit you with some more as we get them. And uh, thanks again. Follow and stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.